All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about Metcalfe's Law. Uh, this is a, a principle that we can apply to the electronic uh, health records. Uh, we can also apply it to the genetic sequencing. And so, you know, kind of the way I see my role in this is to hopefully kind of keep you guys one step ahead of the, the questions and such. Um, so it's something that can be applied to the, um, to the U.S. mainly in the step, and it's kind of an interesting topic. Um, so in that spirit, uh, because Metcalf Law talks about the, the benefit of a, of, a, of a system is based on the number of users. So um, if, you, if you find uh, help in the videos and you want to see more videos this year, uh, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe. And it kind of lets me know that, uh, that there's interest out there. So anyways, I hope, hope you like the video. All right, guys. So it says the... High Tech Act of 2009 endorsed grants and incentives totaling billions of dollars to stimulate meaningful use of electronic medical records, EMRs, by healthcare professionals. <clears throat> Despite mandatory use of EMRs and the existence of clinical computing software for decades, researchers have concluded that the value of the EHR EMR among family physicians is a fraction of its potential. Which of the following may be most attributable to the underrealized value of using EMRs? And again, that's just electronic medical records. Is it A, lack of training of healthcare provider within EMR system? Is it B, funding to, funding to providers during the implementation stage? Is it C, temptation to copy and paste patient records? Is it D, failure to adopt and use electronic technologies? Or is it E, fragmentation of the EMR, uh, EHR EMR systems? So, this, you know, this is kind of a biostatistics, yet it's kind of, it can, it can fall in several areas, but I think this is something, uh, the reason to solve this, you've got to be familiar with what's called Metcalfe's Law, okay? Metcalfe's Law. And this is coming, something that's kind of in the news these days for different reasons, but it applies to the U.S. and the steps based on the electronic med medical records and how it's in, and, and its use. So essentially this question is saying, well, how come the, after, since 2009, we've been, we've been implementing EMRs and we're basically at a point where, you know, how can we make it even more meaningful? Well, according to Metcalfe's law, the value of a network, okay, the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of users, okay? So Metcalfe's law, value of a network is proportional to the square number of the users. And really what that means is, is say you had, you know, and they use this like in the telecom business and, you know, Walmart, Google, um, and these days it's actually like Bitcoin and Ethereum are using this principle as far as predictions, is that if you have two users, right, so if you have two users, that's one connection. You know, there's one connection. Um, so if you increase from two users to three users, how many connections do you have? One, two, three. Um, you know, there's three and so on. So you, it starts going up proportionally. If there's four users in a system, this guy connects to him, then he can connect back and forth and so on, you know. So Metcalfe's law says as the the value of whatever you're doing goes up pr proportionally to the square of the number of users. So it's n, that's the number, squared. So how does, and you're thinking, okay, well, well, big deal. How does this apply to what I'm trying to do for the USMLE? Well, you have EMRs. Why would, you know, what could, and it's only in a fraction of, of its potential, what is the most att attributable reason of this? Now, is it the lack of training? No, it's not, well, yeah, could that, that could play a factor um, on it, but not so much what we're looking for here. Funding to providers during impl implementation. Well, the research that I've seen is that actually this was, you know, something that was, uh, it was pretty much uh, like a subsidized. So I don't think it's going to be this guy. Temptation to copy and paste. Well, we know this kind of occurs, the whole copy forward. Um, but again, that's not going to be why it's un underrealized. So it's not so much this guy. Failure to adopt and use electronic technologies? Not so much, you know, because pretty much the government said here, we're going to pretty much make it mandatory. So it, was, it wasn't something you, re you really had much of a choice. So it's not this one. Or is it E, fragmentation of the EHR, EMR systems? Now, fragmentation means that they're, like, not connected. 
per se, not all connected, because uh, you know there's several systems out there like Epic, um, I think the one like Cerner, um, you know even the one I'm I partially use Meditech, uh, Patient Keeper, and the list goes on and on. But what's the problem between these guys? They don't talk to each other. Okay, they don't talk to each other. If they don't talk to each other, then the value of the system, okay, the value of the system isn't as strong as it could be. Okay, so why are EMRs uh, underrealized in their true potential? It's not so. It's not so much that people don't want to adopt it, or there's funding issues, or lack of training. It's the fact is the systems don't talk to each other. You're not sharing the records um, between them. And if they would do that, you know, if they, it, you know, it's like this: if you got, if you took a survey of a thousand physicians, and two hundred and fifty of them were on Epic, a um, hundred of them were on Cerner, you know, another, you know, another two hundred started using, you know, Meditech and so on. The power of that two fifty squared is not as much if everybody was using the same one then it would be a thousand squared, okay? And that's where the value of the network, okay? And if you notice, like I said, these days, you got companies like Walmart, right? It's all about the information. You know, whatever you purchase, they, they start getting that information. Google, it's about the information. Uh, these days, Bitcoin, right? Ethereum, that's where I've been putting a lot of my, a lot of my energy lately, okay? So anyways, be familiar with Metcalfe's Law. Okay, when, especially when it comes to EMRs. You can also apply this, all that, uh, like say, genetic testing that they're doing, right? Where's the value in this? Is that when they get enough people to put in the data that we could actually transition from a, as they say, right now we're, we're almost like a phenotypic medicine, right? It's what's in front of us that we see that we could move toward a more of a geno typic medicine. I don't know if that's even a word, but that's kind of what when I was reading through this. Okay? Anyways, Metcalfe's Law. This one says, research has found that the overall value of electronic health record, electronic record, le electronic record, medical record, EHR, EMR, is greatly reduced by the fragmentation in hundreds of incompatible systems, just like what we talked about. The hindrance to professional exchange of important clinical documentation in the use of EHR, EMR, caused by this fragmentation could be mitigated or reduced to the use of which of the following solutions? Okay, is it A, improved training prior to the roll, to the, um, this should have been rollout. Okay, to the rollout of the EHR, EMR? Is it free and open source software? Is it decentralization of the EHR, EMR? Or is it D, moving towards a more patient-centered approach? Okay, so basically all they're saying is how do we improve the, you know, the power of the network? Well, to improve the power of the network is that we gotta get more people you know, connecting to, to each other um, and, and so on, okay? So how do we do that? Is it improved training? Or, no, that's really not gonna improve the number of the network people coming together. Is it free and open source software? Okay, well maybe, right? Because that could actually make more people, if everybody's on the same software, then you're gonna have more connections within the system and the rule of Metcalfe's law is gonna apply. Is it decentralization? Oh, wait a second, the word, you know, this is what where everybody's going toward finance, but when it comes to decentralization, um, you know, you're moving away from one pure source, per se. And in some instances, it may not be for the best. So it's not so much decentralization we're looking for. It would be more of a centralization. So it's not that one. Is it moving towards a more patient-centered approach? Well, that's a great thing and all, but that's not going to help the, um, the fragmentation issue by EMR. The correct answer, the only answer, is going to be free and open source software. Again, if we could get everybody on the same software program, we could have more connections, um, and therefore that would increase the power of the network. And again, it's called Metcalfe's Law. You see it these days, especially these days, if, you're, if you follow any of that stuff on the news, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, again, the Walmarts, the, the Googles of the world, um, that's how the telecom business is. Um, it's like whoever has the most information uh, wins. And I got this. 
you know, again, this is just, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to the USMLE. You know, Metcalf's law predicts reduced power of electronic medical records, you know. This is stuff that's out there. You're not probably aware of it, but obviously it's kind of my role here to see if I can at least make it to where you guys are at least familiar with it. It's the power of the network. Okay? Hope you like the video, guys. Thank you.